You wish you could say that about the New York Giants. This is Tim's New York Giants. Strike Talk powered by Line Big Blue LLC. Want to talk about after the debacle? Want to talk about can the 2024 Giants and Daniel Jones be fixed? Can this season be salvaged? Can we sally forward and move on into a different direction going in against the Washington Commanders on Sunday? Sunday, 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 Truckosaurus. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a weird question because I don't, I don't know how bad this team is. I can tell you how good they're not, but we don't really know how bad they are. This loss against the Minnesota Vikings was pretty bad. Minnesota, I've said it before. Minnesota Vikings have a good defense. This was going to be a good, I, I mentioned on the stream, this was going to be a good test. I don't think they're a top 15 defense. I think they're a cut below that Minnesota, anywhere between like 17 to 22. But they were, they are a good, well coached, well disciplined Brian Flores defense. Do I think their talent level? in the defensive backfield was extraordinarily better than the giants. No, the sh- it shouldn't have been, but you, you have to take a look at it, at this giant team as a whole. And, and when I look at it, I think to myself, okay, what could they do better? L- l- first of all, let's just get the elephant out of the room. This is a four to six win team. And I'm still projecting. This is a four to six win win team. In year three of the Shane regime, the talent level for this team has not grown exponentially. It really hasn't. It hasn't gotten better to the point that you want to take a look at that first season under Shane and Dable and not call it an aberration. An aberration, excuse me. And that's the problem with this team. Are they going to be as bad as they are were on Sunday? Um, there, there is going to be times, yes, that they are going to look this, this pathetic, this pitiful. Brian Dable came out like a good soldier and took these slings and arrows and said that he's got to do better. He's got to, he's got to coach better. It's a no shock to no one, I think, that Daniel Jones is going to be the starting quarterback on Sunday. There's no shock to that because he, he usually has good games against Washington. It is, is, are those good games against Washington going to propel us into a, a playoff season? No, not at all. Not even close. So we got to get all that out of our mind. I think that's the point we got to get out of our mind. You had some people that came into the season, the content creators, beat writers, and the people that thought this was going to be a nine, 10 win, win, win team. When Vegas and most pronosticators and most websites had this team ranked anywhere between 30, 30th to 31st, in reference to the power rankings in the NFL, you got Vegas saying, I think four and a half to five wins because that's just what this team is. And inside the New York bubble, we don't like to look at things from the outside perspective because then we see things we don't like kind of like Malik neighbors. Did you feel that he didn't look for you as much as you would have expected? I mean, you know, he, you know, I don't know really what was going on back there, but um, you know, I'm getting out my routes and, you know, I'm just, just trying to make a play, um, trying to find him, trying to make, you know, a better throw for him to make. Um, so, I mean, I was just doing my job. I mean, so Malik Nambers is just doing his job out there. He really doesn't know what's going on back there. He's just doing his job. That's not a comment you want after week one from your Wookiee, uh, your Wookiee, <laughs> your rookie wide receiver who is here to save the franchise in Daniel Jones's career, which goes against all NFL conventional wisdom. Most Team, most people usually tell you, you know what, you build a solid running game, you build a solid defense, you get your good, get yourself a good quarterback, and you get into the playoffs that way. But from week one, you really don't want Malik Neighbor sitting there going, I really don't know what's going on back there. Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm just doing my job. And the sullen look on his face is kind of what ge- it kind of what gives me, it gives me a little angst. Because as a kid that just played in his first NFL game, I understand it was a loss. You think he'd be a little bit more up about it? Hey, listen, I just played my first NFL game, and it was fucking awesome. I, and, and you you just look at all the if if we want to break this down from problem levels, we want to st- let's start. And like I said, can this team be fixed? No, it can't be fixed. <laughs> no, it really can't because there's nothing to fix because this is the same team that was 
what we saw in preseason and what we saw last year. This is the same team. There's not, there's not much of a difference here. There really isn't much of a difference. And what we have to look at from an impact is what we can do to maybe mitigate some of the issues that we're going to have. Now let's start with the offense first. Can the offense be fixed? I don't think the offense is totally broken. Yes. They gave up five sacks. I would say three of those were on the quarterback itself. Cause Daniel Jones stepped up into defensive linemen all on his own, at least twice. So I don't think the offensive line is going to be as poor as it was last year, but I also don't think that the offensive line is going to be as good as people think. I think this talent level they brought in was, it was interesting to the fact that I don't think it completely fits a continuity and philosophy outside of the two Raiders. Didn't like, I don't still don't like the John Runyon pickup. I've said it before. John Runyon was John Runyon. The green Bay Packers thought so much of John Runyon. They, they drafted his replacement last year and alternated his snaps between like the last six, seven games and into the playoffs with a rookie. So I'm not a big fan of Runyon. Andrew Thomas is going to be Andrew Thomas. And I still think that JMS is an undersized center. Who's going to have problems with bigger defensive tackles and nose and defensive ends and nose tackles. But I don't, I, I think you have more than a serviceable offensive line. Is it going to be a dominating one? No, but if we were ranked anywhere between 22nd to 25th in the league, I, I'm, I think that's probably where you're going to end up. Now, the problem is when you don't have that dominant push up front, and you have an average running back in Devin Singletary, that's going to that's gonna cause problems. Devin Singletary did not look, it's not that he looked slow hitting the hole, and he didn't look like he was indecisive. He's just not the same back as Saquon Barkley. Now, Brian Day will kind of, kind of threw a little shade on Saquon the other day when he, when he was talking about Singletary before the game, saying, you know what's great about Singletary? He, he hits the hole. He doesn't dance, and that was a crack at Saquon. Well, you know what? Saquon danced to 130 plus yards and three touchdowns in his Eagle debut. Devin Singletary had his opportunity to be the featured back last year in the Texans. And I mentioned to it before I, I listened to the Texans broadcast on the way home. They, they, they raved about Joe Mixon. They raved how he was the best back that they have had in years on this team, on that team, on that Texans team. And I thought to myself, wasn't Devin Singletary the starting running back last year? You had a rookie at quarterback last year. His, a lot of his wide receivers went down. You would think that the philosophy of the Texans would have been to run the ball more. No, they stuck with the rookie quarterback and still tried to more than they tried to matriculate the ball down the field. Eric Gray is not a, Eric Gray is not a, a, a second back or a third back. He is a special teamers. I have no idea what Tyrone Tracy is, but your skill position of the backfield is not going to get any better this year. This is what it's going to be. I would expect a few games where it's going to be 23 to 30 carries for 75 yards. And it's going to be not only the part of the offensive line fault, but it's also going to be part of the, the running back position. Your wide receivers were supposed to be your, your guys. And I keep saying this before our wide receiver room, basically is same from last year outside of neighbors, but I expect more from the wide receivers. Uh, Jalen, Jalen Hyde had like four snaps. I don't get that. I don't get, I don't get that by Dable. Something must be going. Something must, something must be going on with the Hyatt. But you have the opportunity to move the fall. You should have the opportunity to move the ball down the field. Your offensive line should have enough continuity to move the ball down the field. But we just don't. And we will have games. Where we're going to have our shots. It's going to be if Daniel Jones underthrows or overthrows a wide receiver. Tight end position is just a hot mess. Theo Johnson may be good, and you know by the end of the year he may be something special. But Bellinger to me is Kevin Boss is a light version of Kevin Boss, almost a like Caden Smith. So if you take a look at us offensively, we're not going to be this juggernaut. Neighbors is going to have his shots. He's going to have his opportunities, but the quarterback's going to have to get him the ball. And that's the frustration, I think, with the giant fan base. I don't think we're in year six of this Daniel Jones fiasco. And it just keeps getting worse. What is he? I think since he signed the contract, what he's thrown two touchdowns and eight interceptions. And a, and a year and change. He hasn't gotten any better than from his rookie year. If anything, he's progressively gotten worse. You have the brains and the, 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 the head of the offense look scared at times, look confused, look like he doesn't like, it sometimes looks like he doesn't, you look at his eyes, sometimes looks like he doesn't want to be out there. 
That's supposed to be your heart and your soul of your offense. And the problem is this. I don't see it uh, still. I have been saying that I got shit on at the end of the 19th season because I did a video and you go back and watch it after the season that said Daniel Jones really only had four good games that year against bad competition, a bunch of more losses. And the problem was Shermer was intelligent enough to understand that he had a rookie quarterback. So what he did is he, to mitigate the issues with Daniel Jones, he cut the field in half for Jones, gave him two options and made him throw to a spot. And that will work for an extended period of time until the league gets film on you. And I kept saying, he's got to learn to read defenses. He's got to learn some pocket awareness. He's got to get some pocket presence. He's got to, he's got to understand the pocket fluidity about moving up in the pocket, moving back in the pocket, side to side, left to right, and taking off when it's an option and and staying in the pocket when taking off is not an option. And for years I had to hear, I have, I have no idea what I'm talking about. And I went back and I watched the video again. It was nothing bad. It was just truth. It was just honesty. It was the American way. And it hasn't gotten any different. It's gotten, and even in his big season with his 30, his 30, 3,000 yards and 15 touchdowns, he barely, how many times did he throw for over 200 yards that entire season? Everyone's going to talk about the Minnesota game. Yeah. Every, you know what they always say, you know, a blind, a, a squirrel can find an acorn every once in a while. So it's going to happen. And also that was probably one of the worst playoff defenses I've seen in 30 years in Minnesota. But the problem is this, you, you have your 27 year old quarterback in year six that you're still trying to convince yourself and the fan base that this is the guy. And then I love it because you saw the videos of people yelling at him. The one guy asking for a million dollars and people booing Dan Jones as he was leaving the building yesterday. And I watch, I, 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 I watched the video and I'm like, that's it. You got sports writers and content creators and people on Twitter all upset that they, how dare they, 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 they boo him to his face and how dare they ask for a million dollars and say things. Well, you know, if I grew up in the eighties, I didn't grow up. I, but I, I, I was, you know, I lived through the eighties and nineties and two early two thousands. I heard stuff from fans to players like Patrick Ewing when he was in his prime leading the Knicks to the playoffs that, that would make you cringe after games. That was beyond tame. What happened to Daniel Jones? You, and I don't understand this. You can burn his Jersey and effigy in the parking lot after the game during the wonder hand, you know, the wonder, the 100th anniversary kickoff. That's Okay. But someone who actually has the balls to say to what they want to say to Daniel Jones, that's not okay because we can't do that. Towards the end of the career, I heard Yankee fans booing Derek Jeter. And this, but you can't do that to Daniel Jones? Grow the fuck up, people. You steal $200 million. Yeah, I'm going to say whatever the hell I want to say. The IQ is just drop sharply while I was away. No, IQs didn't. Balls didn't. So you're never going to fix this offense with totally fix this offense with Daniel Jones. He's going to have his two, three good games. He's then going to have the pendulum swing with the content creators going back onto the Daniel Jones bandwagon to jump back off again, to go back on the bandwagon, to jump back off again, to go back on the bandwagon, to jump back off again. It's going to be dizzying as usual, but I see this as a low ranked offense. You look at the defense. I, I, I was never a fan of hiring Shane Bowen. The Giants just had to wait. Go, literally, the Giants just had, just had to wait till after the Super Bowl, and they could have had a much better defensive coordinator. I don't think there's a system involved in this defense. I, I think it's the. I think the system, of course, is the bend not break Shane Bowen defense. We've said this before. Shane Bowen's defense. Uh, excuse me. Um, Shane Bowen's secondaries have always been terrible outside of the two Jim Schwartz years where Jim Schwartz was basically his mentor and his second set of eyes. And this is an article you can read in the day. I believe it was the daily Tennessee. And when Jim Schwartz talked about, talked about what he did for two years with Tennessee, and he basically said, you know, I, I was the quasi backup defensive coordinator and the second set of eyes for Shane Bowen and a mentor. And it's it, without Schwartz Bowen secondary sucked. You had two good years. Schwartz leaves to go to Cleveland. Secondary sucks again in Tennessee last year. And that's going to, that's still the philosophy. Now he's a guy that doesn't like to rush more than four. He, he's a guy that'll blitz 25% of the time. 
And the problem is that's fine. If you're generating a pass rush with your two defensive ends. And one of the things that I talked about, and one of the things that, that, that burned into me all this season, when we went out and got Brian Burns was the fact that I even mentioned it over and over again. My biggest concern is my biggest fear is what happens when these two have games where they both disappear. You had four tackles and one quarterback hit between these two guys. And at one point in time, Kayvon got benched. And I didn't think it was going to happen game one, but I know there's going to be like six, seven games this season where they have zero impact because it's their modus operandi. You take a look at the way Burns and Kayvon plays. They, they'll have three sack games, two sack games, and then they'll disappear for six games. We went through it about how many times cave or excuse me, how many times Burns only had one tackle one solo tackle and that was it or less. He had a couple of games where he had zero solo tackles. We had the same thing with, with cave on cave will get a plethora of sacks and go six and a half games with a half a sack. It's just the type of players that they are. They are going to disappear at times. And I've said it right. I don't know how many times what's going to happen when we have a game, when they both disappear at the same time. And it was on opening day. <laughs> it was, it was the kickoff excuse me, it was the season kickoff. And if you're not generating a rush with those guys, you're exposing a bad secondary. Banks cannot do everything on his own. Pinnock to me is an average player. Newbin and Belton. I, I, I think you're, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even going to go there. Tyler Newbin, you hope will turn into a player. Dane Belton. We already know is not a player. And then you got the likes of Cordell Flott. And then you got the likes of even bringing back a Dory Jackson. A Dory Jackson sat on the free agent market for as long as he did for a reason. He gave up what? 54 receptions for 750 yards last year and three or was it, two or three touchdowns. He hasn't really had a great season or a really good season since his second year in Tennessee. So when you are exposing the pass rush by not getting to the quarterback, you are then exposing your Defensive backs outside of banks that are not very good or they're very inexperienced. You miss Isaac Yitam. <laughs> I shouldn't even done that, but you miss Isaac Yitam. The other issue right off the bat, when you're not generating a pass rush, you're exposing your secondary is, is, is the run defense. I've said this before and I've been saying it a million times. Brian Burns and Kayvon Thibodeau are pass rushers. They are, I'm not saying they're strictly pass rushers, but their ability to play the run is beyond suspect. And you have both of you have one on the left, one on the right. And I said this during the stream. If I was the Vikings, I would run off tackle and I would run at Burns and Thibodeau. And that's exactly what Aaron Jones did. I would just run right at him because they're, mindset at times is an over aggressiveness to get the, to the quarterback and not understanding that they still need to play the run and maintain their assignments and hold the edge. Because what happens is if you can't do that, why, if I'm a, if I'm a smart offensive coordinator, I just run right at you because I know at times you're going to over pursue or you're just going to miss your assignment. And the giants linebacking core is so poor outside of, Bobby Okereke that we are going to have games where they're going to get to the second level. Teams are going to get into the second level very quickly. And I always go back to, to hard knocks. I think the hard knocks was the worst thing for the giants. Shane Bowen's first meeting with the, with the giants, Joe Shane asked him, Who, what do you want? What do you, what, what do you need? You know, what do you need to make your defense successful? His first set, his first thing out of his mouth was, I need two linebackers. How about Brian Burns? <laughs> you got a rookie in Darius. You got Bobby Okereke. You got McFadden, who had an okay season last year. I think people, people, he, he had more of a Tay Crowder season last year because people want to forget that he had the most missed tackles at his position for, in the entire league. You got, what's the name, Whitley out there? You had, uh, you had, Don, uh, you had Dante Johnson, but he went to the IR. So our linebacking core is beyond suspect. And if you have two defensive ends who are, do not have the ability to play the run and you run right at them and they get into the second level and you only have one quality linebacker at that second level, you're screwed. 
you can't even go back to doing the, the Logan Ryan peppers McKinney game days. Well, you know, with Patrick Graham, where you play them as quasi linebackers, you put them in the box. I think of Logan Ryan and peppers at one point in time, I think they played like 67% in the, their snaps in the box. Cause they were quasi linebackers. We don't have, we don't, we have the likes of Trey Hawkins, Drew Phillips, Dane Belton, Adore Jackson. <laughs> Who the hell are you going to put in the box? Your strength is going to be the interior line with Dexter, but I'm not running at Dexter. You know what I'm, you know what I'm doing if I'm Washington and I have the running game that Washington has, I am running. I design runs with Jaden Daniels to the out, off tackle to the outside. Same thing with the running backs. And then when Dexter gets a little, not a little annoyed, we'll say, and gets a little over aggressive and over pursues, then you run a draw. Delayed handoff or a draw right up the middle. That's what you need to look at. Because Jordan Riley, DJ Davidson aren't striking fear. Denacho's not striking fear. The only thing that strikes fear right me to me is Dexter Lawrence. This team is a cut and paste team. We cut and paste talent, and I don't really understand the philosophy of this cut and paste talent. Because they don't mess, they don't mix. With this bow, they don't mix with the Bowen system. And in some ways, the offensive talent has gotten has not gotten any better. So, like I said, can this team be fixed? No, because this is what this team is. I'm saying it again. They are still a four, even after this debacle, they are still a four and six team. They are gonna have their moments when they play well. They're gonna have their moments when they do things right. They're gonna have those moments when they look awesome. The content creators are gonna wet themselves like they usually do. And then the next week, shit's gonna blow up and they're gonna go back to saying that this team sucks. I can always forget about Isaiah Simmons. You wanna know why? Because Isaiah Simmons was gonna be the X Factor. And I kept telling people, Isaiah Simmons isn't good. He had an, he played in an attacking style defense with Wink, and he played the least amount of snaps in his entire career. And people want to talk, well, he didn't give up any touchdowns. Yeah, but he gave up like 72% passing, I mean, excuse me, completion percentage. And you moved him. He is, he's listed as the third nickelback because he's just not that good. We over evaluate talent on this team. And we've been doing it for years. And people that follow this team always overinflate and overevaluate this talent because the talent's not that great. I've said it before. If you take a look at this and you say to yourself, on a good team, on a playoff team, how many starters on the Giants on a playoff team would 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 be on a team would be on that team? So if we take a look at the Giants tw- starting twenty two men, how many of those men? could have a starting position on a playoff team, on a top 10 playoff team. You look at it all at the beginning. You look, I, I, I look at the offense. I can't even say neighbors yet because he's still a rookie. You, you what? You're going to say Andrew Thomas? So there's one. You take a look at the defense on a playoff caliber team. I'm going to go Dexter Lawrence, and I'm going to go Bobby Okereke more fits a system, but I'll say Okereke and maybe Brian Burns. So there's four guys out of the 22 that if you took a top 10 of a top 10 team, they went to a top 10 team. Only those four guys out of 22 would probably start. That's the New York football giants. You're going to have to just live with this guys. It's going to be, it's going to be peaks and valleys this season, peaks and valleys. And at the end of the day, I think there's going to be more valleys than peaks, but you're going to have your moments. You're going to have your time. But there's going to have to be a hard lesson at the end of the season because people are like, well, you can't get rid of Shane. Shane brought in talent that's just not talent. This is not NFL talent. Yeah, who, I remember when you couldn't screw up the fifth and the seventh pick? I think I want his son running this team more than I want Joe Shane. Oh, we'll have the su- Sunday Giant will be back this Sunday because you know the Giants are away. So make sure you stay tuned for that. There'll be a lot of videos this week. We're going to have a lot of fun. So make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. I uh, really appreciate all the people that, that have tuned, started to tune into the channel and enjoy the channel. So hopefully, hopefully you continue to do that. And as always, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to ring that bell. Join the line. That'd be awesome.